Here's one of my favorite pickups of the night. This is an 1875 20 cent piece. And the reason why I do enjoy this coin is because uh, it does, like I said, have that originality and it's a little bit of a tougher date. Here's another coin that I really enjoy. Um, this is an 1853 half cent. Um, overall, the coin is stunning just because it has that nice chocolatey brown to it still. Hey guys, this is Drew with Acoustic Collectibles. Welcome back to a brand new video. Uh, went to my buddy's house, spent $6,000 in six hours, uh, bought a whole nice variety of stuff. So I can't wait to show you guys this um, in our video today. And I also wanted to read something real quick. Uh, this is from our friend Robert. Uh, he sent me a, a really nice cat bus quarter. And he also sent me uh, this counterfeit uh, seated half dollar. I really do appreciate it, Robert. And uh, his note says, I really respect what you do in your business. And on YouTube, um, enclosed you'll find uh, the 1837 bus quarter. Uh, but I also enclosed a Christmas gift for you. Uh, it's an 1875 uh, contemporary counterfeit half dollar. It was given to me by my grandmother. It's my pleasure to pass it on to someone who will truly appreciate it, enjoy it. Uh, the coin needs a, a, a new good home. Um, best regards, Robert. So uh, very thankful for Robert. Very thankful for everybody that's been watching our videos and has been going to our website. Uh, but without further ado, let's get this video started. Hey guys. Celebrating my 24th birthday at Ranch Hand. Here's their address if you're ever in town. But uh, just take a look at this bandit pudding and enjoy the rest of the episode. Happy 24th, Drew! Sit into a tumble Waves that shake me out Hey guys, just made it out to the light box and uh, I was just so thankful to be able to make this video today. Um, just an amazing lot of coins from our friends uh, that we've been working with for a while. Um, they are just, I mean, it, there's so many things that uh, they do right and they what they do for us is just... Uh, unbelievable but I wanted to jump into the coin uh, kind of showing you guys today these are my favorite vi videos to kind of uh, show you just because of all the great things that I get to hold in my hand but without further ado let's show you a few of the coins that we have today this is an 1810 uh, cap bust half um, I just love the originality of the coin it has some color on the reverse as well um, you know just the coins like this, they all they just fit in a set so easily, and bust bust halves like this are just so hard to find at the moment. Um, our friends uh, always offer coins to us like this, just because they work so hard to get them. Um, and so when I when I see something like this, I just have to pick it up for you guys for the shop. Um, so, and the reason why I like this coin a lot, like I said, is just the originality of it. Um, I think it's just uh, you know nothing that really distracts from the eye, and it's something that you know people back then that was circulating around. Um, this is this is kind of what things looked like. It wasn't messed with like you see some other bus halves today. But uh, let's keep showing you guys some coins here. Uh, this is an 1861 seated quarter, and the thing that I really enjoy about the 61 date is that it has a really kind of a small date compared to other quarters. Um, it does look to have some like some old cleaning on it, but other than that, I just enjoy the qualities of it. Um, you can kind of see, I love the interesting design here um, of the bird. And, you know, the thing about the quarter, as opposed to like seated halves, is that, um, you know, everything's more tight-knit and uh, easier for you to see. You know, sometimes you get lost on, on a half dollar, um, just trying to encapsulate what it looks like. But with these quarters, I don't know, I think that... Um, they fit in an album really nicely, um, and they're really hard to kind of find uh, sometimes just because people are developing different sets and sometimes add things like this to their typeset as well. So um, let me show you guys this quarter too. This quarter um, has a lot of originality to it just because you can see the darkness in the fields there. It's got a lot of meat in the bone is what they call it. But when you take, when you take a, a look at the reverse here, it's just, wow. I mean, I love the... I love the darkness to it. I love the that uh, the kind of circulated look too. They call it like a circulated cameo these days. Um, but you know, there's. Let me show you a few more here. Up next here is uh, an 1887 
uh, seated dime. Um, as you can see, it has some interesting color uh, to the left of her. Uh, and it also has um, kind of that interesting darkness to it as well. Um, the thing about this coin, though, I think that, um, you know, it's, it has that more of that cleany look to it. You can kind of see that with the one dime area there. Um, but I think this coin still is, is pretty nice, especially just with the character uh, that it has. Um, and most of these coins I do get for an affordable price. So anything that kind of jumps out with uniqueness, like this coin or like the coins I just showed you, is something that uh, we really like to pick up, really like to offer. Um, and we also got, you know, a lot of the stuff that we actually ended up picking up at this, uh, at our friend's house, a lot of the stuff mainly goes for typesets. So you kind of see at their house something like this. This is an 1875S uh, 20 cent piece. Um, and when you find a 20 cent piece for under $100, um, but, you know, it's it's pretty difficult to find, especially with this nice a condition like this coin is. Um, just not very many distracting marks, no distracting scratches. Um, the coin hasn't been cleaned. Um, you know, it's had a nice, gentle, circulated life, which is something that most collectors do uh, enjoy enjoy uh, collecting and finding. Um, and most of the time, they don't want to spend, you know, five, six, seven, eight hundred dollars on a mint state um, twenty cent piece. They just want something with a little character, something that they can set back for themselves. Hi guys, we're back with another whiteboard session. The title of today's whiteboard session is "Can You Top This Loss?" We were at the Tennessee Coin Show a few weeks ago, and we were getting ready to go into the general area where we could set up and put our coins out to sell. And we were talking with other dealers about our grades and how we were getting back our PCGS orders and how they weren't coming back the way we expected. And we were talking to another coin dealer, and he's like, can your loss top my loss? And he starts going into a conversation with us and a story about a time where he purchased a Fabergé egg for $15,000. And what ended up happening was he was low on capital. It was a lot of money at the time for him and he wasn't able to hold on to this Fabergé egg for long. So in him having this valuable egg and him thinking that it was worth quite a bit, he did his research and he reached out to a lot of antique dealers and Fabergé egg retailers in the United States. With no luck and a lot of discouragement, he ends up selling it to another individual that ends up having a lot more luck than he does. He ends up getting this Fabergé egg, this, this end owner ends up getting this Fabergé egg and takes it to a well-known Fabergé egg expert in London. They end up tracing this Fabergé egg back to the Tsars of Russia. It was once a gift from a czar to the princess of Russia. If, and this Fabergé egg that was once $15,000 goes to auction and sells for $33 million. And from this story we learn a lot of lessons that we can incorporate in life and in coin dealing in general. A few of these lessons we've written down here. Don't be quick to sell. He was quick to sell because of capital constraints and it seemed like he was very discouraged from his story. Don't settle for what others tell you. Like I said in the story, he reached out to a lot of people that told him, it's junk, man. I don't believe it. It's not real. We also learned that you need to educate yourself and do research. And if you don't figure out what you need to know, set it back in your safe and think on it for a few months. Don't dwell on your mistakes. Though, this $33 million could have changed his life after uh, some auction fees. Could have changed his life. You can't dwell on that. You gotta take another step forward and you gotta live out the rest of your life looking for the next success. Again, capital management is key. If you would have had $30,000, he could have sat on that 15 grand Fabergé egg for a little bit longer than he did. And if you are educated and you do do your research, like we mentioned here, one deal can change your life. That could have changed his life. Thanks again, guys, for watching our whiteboard session on Can You Top This Loss? Here's one of my favorite pickups of the night. This is an 1875 20 cent piece. And the reason why I do enjoy this coin is because uh, it does, like I said, have that originality. And it's a little bit of a tougher date. Uh, 1875S was a lot more 
uh, you know, they made a lot more of those, but the 1875 Philadelphia is a little bit tougher. And so this coin overall is something that, you know, we, we get an 1875 S for the shop, but we also get an 1875 for the shop. So uh, you can't go wrong picking up both, especially uh, when they had, like I said, a nice, gentle uh, run of the mill through uh, it themselves being circulated. We've also been jumping into half cents and cents. Um, here's something that we also picked up as well. This is an 1832 uh, half cent. You know, it's got a little darkness to it. Um, it doesn't have that chocolate in its color that most uh, collectors might want. Um, but as you can see, uh, you know, problem-free surfaces, um, very nice detail in the hair there. Um, and when we flip it over, you know, it still has some a little bit of brown to the coin. Uh, no scratches, uh, no dings. Um, you know, overall, it's a it's a well-centered coin in terms of uh, its eye appeal. It's something that I like to take a leap on once in a while and try out. Uh, and so I hope you guys enjoy taking a look at this coin with me. Um, I do think it is nice for an AU grade. Here's something that you guys don't see every day. This is 1838. Large stars, no drapery, seated half dime. That's a lot of words, but um, you know, uh, you know, it, it's it's it, overall there's a lot of meat on the bone for this coin. Um, there's still a lot of detail to it. Um, it. It looks like it has had a little bit of cleaning in the past, and you can kind of see that in the center of the half dime there. But when you take a look at it, there's a lot of detail that I just enjoy about it. You can kind of see, um, you know, there's a lot of detail around the stars, uh, around her design there. Um, and so most of these coins, when I do find them, they're not extra fine. Um, they're more of good or fine or very good. So, and what my friend has told me, he said, you know, if I can't sell this to you, if these don't work for you, I have somebody else to sell them to. And that is 100% true because since the start of the pandemic, there's been a lot of, uh, you know, collecting that is starting to become online. And it's been easier for people to find nice coins like this. And now that we're getting more and more uh, along in the path, there's been less and less coins like this available for people um, just because of the, the market taking a giant surge. So stuff like this um, is something, like I said, to enjoy and get into. And I hope you guys uh, would take a look at our website and maybe pick something up. Here is the 1861 seated halftime. And the thing I enjoy about this, this coin is it has like a little bit of a rainbow toning to it. Uh, it also has uh, an interesting date. It almost looks kind of small. But that's kind of how those uh, Civil War era kind of dates looked. Um, and when you flip it over, uh, we've been seeing a little bit of cleaning kind of on the uh, previous coins. But on this coin, uh, there's been very little issues with it, kind of towards where it says half dime there. Um, and it also has uh, that nice kind of blue and green color to it. Um, and so when I saw this coin in hand yesterday, I was like, eh, yeah, this coin has to come home. And, um, you know, I, ha I have to have it. And so... Uh, the coins like this is just a no-brainer for me, just like I said, because of that color, uh, because of the originality that you kind of see for it, and it's more of that Civil War date where people um, really enjoy the history of the coin. Up next, I wanted to show you this 1887S uh, Morgan Dollar. Uh, I grade the coin at Mint State 63, Mint State 64, just because of, you know, uh, the cheek is pretty clean. There is a little bit of, uh, you know, a little bit of trouble kind of out there with the chatter. Um, and there is a little bit of darkness to the coin, but the thing that I really enjoy about this coin is that it is tape toned. And so when you flip it over, you can see just the color uh, coming off the States of America on the top and the $1 on the bottom. Um, and so, you know, when you find uh, coins that are a little bit more of a tougher grade and also have that nice toning to them, um, that's something that um, is, is something that maybe a, a normal dealer would pass up. But for me, um, I have people that end up buying these just because. Um, an 1887 with this kind of character is something that you don't see every day. Um, you see a lot of, you know, 1881 S Morgan dollars like this, or you see a lot of, uh, you know, 1878 S Morgan dollars like this. Stuff that was more common back in the day, people like to put um, in their albums with tape. But someone back then ended up being able to afford a really nice 1887 S, which is, like I said, a little bit more of a difficult date. They slapped that baby in there, and it ended up producing something like this. And uh, when I saw this from our, our friends, he was this this coin I just couldn't pass up. And I think uh, the, these coins were pulled out of the same album. This is a 1900 uh, Morgan dollar. Um, I grade this coin kind of almost uh, MS AU kind of side. I would say it's more of like a slider. 
um, but uh, it has that nice color on the obverse and a little bit darker on the reverse, which isn't too crazy for me. Um, but I think that tape toning hit just in the perfect spot. Uh, gave it that real nice character that I enjoy. Um, and so stuff like this, I think, is a part of numismatic history where, you know, we didn't really have the best kind of technology as we do today in terms of the plastic and the true views. And even those updated albums like, you know, Dance Goes and all that stuff. People just slap stuff in kind of binders almost and put tape over them. And, you know, we've been progressing ever since then. And I think this is just something interesting that kind of dates the coin. Um, and gives it that you know point in history where it was set aside and uh, and, and really treasured. Here's another coin that I really enjoy. Um, this is an 1853 half cent. Um, overall, the coin is stunning just because it has that nice chocolatey brown to it still. Um, I would grade the coin AU um, just because you know it, does, it has been lightly circulated, it has been going around a little bit. But I mean, just take a look at the fields, take a look at the the details here. Is this something that you would like for yourself? You know, that's something that uh, I questioned yesterday. It's like, even if I, you know, don't keep a coin for myself, would I have a problem selling it? Uh, or would I have a problem uh, kind of holding it in my hand and saying, man, I wish I could keep this coin? I think all those things are true. You know, I think that uh, when you provide a good service and provide coins that people really enjoy, like this one, uh, you know, you, you really enjoy the hobby more because you get to hold them, but also you get to find new homes for them. Kind of like when we were talking about with Robert earlier. Uh, with that nice seated half dollar and like I was saying earlier you know we did buy about 60 coins um, from our friends and um, you know we can't really show all of you all these to you guys in the video today but if you guys would like to take a look on our website acousticcollectibles.com um, you guys could see everything that we picked up but let's spend some a little bit more time here rapid firing through just a few more coins that you guys might enjoy um, this is an 1828 uh, 13 stars half cent uh, you know, it, it does look to have circulation uh, a lot on the hair there, but overall the details are still nice. This is a pretty uh, beat up 1877 CC seated half dollar. Um, you know, you can still see the CC on the reverse there, which I enjoy. And, and you know, it's something to get my feet wet with the CC series apart from Morgan's. Um, this is an 1848 uh, or 1840 small date uh, large scent. Um, uh, you know, it still has some chocolate left on it and I enjoy that kind of that smaller date gives it that kind of interesting look as apart from those other large scent dates where they're kind of big and bulgy. Um, here's the 1826, uh, cap bust half, you know, look at that originality, something that I really love. Um, you know, when you flip it over, it's pretty nice as well. Another original, uh, cap bust half, uh, kind of that small date as well. And I mean, I got a little uh, wear on the face there, but overall the coin is pretty original. Um, and here's a few more. This is a 1918S. Um, almost looks like it has a 7 there peeking out at me, but when I take a closer look at it, it really doesn't. You know, XF coin, which is pretty neat. Uh, this is a nice 1968 Kennedy half dollar. Um, I grade this coin kind of a 64, 65 area, but the toning is very nice. Here's uh, something you don't see every day, 1825, 4 over 2. Um, just a tough rarity to find in any grade. Had to get this one. This is an 1864, kind of that woody grain looking uh, two cent piece. I think the coin has been polished though, so I did indicate details on uh, the 2x2. Two two. But I like the, uh, the overall characteristics of the coin, but it is a details grade. This is um, an 1853 seated half dollar. And the reason why I really picked this one up is because it has the arrows on it. And it also has um, the rays, as you can see, going out from the eagle. The last coin I wanted to show you guys today is this 1842 half dime graded XF45 by PCGS. And the reason why I wanted to share this with you is it because it has this really nice blue and kind of that reddish toning to it. And I enjoy the coin overall because it has that color and it has that kind of originality on the obverse and it still has that color on the reverse as well. But thank you guys for watching this part of the video. Let's cut it to the outro. Thank you guys for watching today's video. If you did enjoy our video, please leave a like. It supports our dream. You want to comment your thoughts? We like your thoughts. What do you think about the coins? What do you think about what we had to say? 
and subscribe. You gotta join the community. We're just, I mean, we're the best ones on here, let's be honest. And why do you wanna subscribe? You don't wanna miss an episode. I mean, we got great coins coming out, great information as a dealer coming out. Do all those things, and we'll see you in the next episode.